Welcome to Twin Whistles Detroit. I'm your host, Show Chap, Detroit Lions News Podcast. We have to get through the news that day. DJ Chark signs in Carolina. Nate Sudfeld resigns with Detroit. What does it all mean? With Nate Sudfeld resigning with Detroit, I think a lot of people drive a bargain that maybe um maybe Nate Sudfeld resigning means that Detroit will probably draft a quarterback. And I don't see it like it that like that at all. You know, I see what what I see with uh, Detroit is I really don't think they're enamored with the sixth pick. I really don't think they're enamored with anybody on the board. And I truly think it's a spot where they can trade out. And I think that they are driving home a smoke screen to maybe get someone to bite. Maybe a team like Washington, uh, the Washington commanders, they see Will Lovis slips the six and they trade their first round pick in their 2024 first round pick and a third round pick for um, the sixth pick. Maybe that happens. Maybe. But I think what Brad Holmes is doing is is the art of negotiations. He is looking to drive a price for the sixth pick, and he's trying to find someone that will pay the price. And I don't think that they're really, like I said, I don't think they're enamored with anybody at the sixth pick. I don't think they're enamored with anybody on the board. I think they really have questions about Jalen Carter. I think that they're just they're kind of in a wait and see mode, and this is what makes this draft a little scary, um, because Brad Holmes went into free agency. He he got a cor- he got two corners. He went and set, he went and signed Chauncey Gardner Johnson. He's restructured all this money. There's obviously a move coming. I believe totally that there's a move coming. So we will see what happens there. But the second part about it is, you know, a lot of veteran quarterbacks will not sign with the team until after the draft. It really doesn't behoove them to sign with the team before the draft. It, it doesn't do them any good. Because if you sign with the team that, that drafts a quarterback, it probably puts your job in jeopardy. I mean, let's just be honest. Like, if you're a quarterback, like Teddy Bridgewater – you're probably going to wait it out to see who drafts a quarterback, who doesn't draft a quarterback, and then you'll you'll kind of pick your spot. And I think that's what Detroit is probably aiming at. I don't think Nate Sudfeld is the number two quarterback to start the year. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. And I really do think that they're trying to drive the price of the sixth pick to trade. That's my opinion. Um, going on to DJ Chark. So DJ Chark signs with Carolina one year, $5 million. He was negotiating with Kansas City. He was negotiating with Detroit. He picked Carolina. I don't know why you would pick Carolina when you got Kansas City, you got Detroit, two proven quarterbacks that are your quarterback that's going to be thrown to you. Obviously, it was something along the lines of maybe I could show myself as a number one wide receiver. Look at DJ Chark, as I know, a lot of people love DJ Chark, but the reality of the situation is this: when DJ Chark was missing games again, um, and Jameson Williams is out, that offense was still humming. So I'm not really worried about the offense. DJ Chark is just a he's he's a trinket player. I mean, he, if he could stay healthy, maybe you would be maybe you would be happy to sign the guy. But being since he's probably going to miss four games a year, what does that matter? In the in the grand scheme of things, so I when DJ Chark signed with Carolina, I was like, listen, this guy had offers from Car- Kansas City, he had offers from Detroit, and this guy goes to Carolina. It doesn't make any sense. It really opens up a couple things. Maybe Detroit sign- drafts a wide receiver in the draft. Maybe it's early on. Maybe it's a Quentin Johnston. Maybe it's a, a, a Jalen Hyatt, Cedric Tillman from Tennessee. There's a lot of avenues they can go. Like I said earlier t- this week, I said the draft is wide open now. Because of what Brad Holmes did in free agency, he can go multiple different ways. And this is what Brad makes Brad Holmes probably a, an elite GM is because he can go multiple different ways to better the team and make the team better. And that's that's pretty special because now he doesn't go into the drafts thinking, I need a corner, I need two corners, I might need three corners, I need a linebacker, I need this, I need that. 
He can go into the draft and he can pick luxury picks. He can pick luxury picks. That defensive line is still going to be good. Uh, I know people don't like the Anzalone re-signing. I still do think they draft a linebacker. Um, one of the names that's really um, becoming a name to watch is Ventral Miller from um, from Florida. And if you've watched, if, in Ventral Miller, he didn't run in his pro day, but he's he's from he's from the Florida Gators. He's a pretty big dude. I think this is one of the players that I think Brett Holmes would like. Um, you know, he's a six foot, two hundred thirty two. Uh, pound linebacker. He's he's pretty he's a pretty stout player. Um, he's 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 a guy that's probably gonna be picked late in the draft. He might be a guy who you know maybe he's a guy who you pick later in the draft. But I think that's a name to watch for the linebacker spot. Um, it's just interesting. This draft can go either way. And what Brad Holmes has done in free agency has shown you that you can go either way with what you're doing. Obviously, with DJ Chark leaving, there's going to be a need for a wide receiver now. And maybe that was a plan all along. Maybe the plan all along was to get a wide receiver in here through the draft. Because this wide receiver class is pretty damn good. Even if you go to the late rounds, there's pretty good wide receivers. So, It'll be very interesting to see what Brad Holmes does in a draft. And I think that the way Brad Holmes is playing with the Nate Sudfeld resigning and the and the probability and the smoke screen that he might take a quarterback, I think it makes this draft really interesting to see what he does with the sixth pick and what does he do to you know bolster the backup quarterback position in Detroit. This is Between the Whistles, Detroit. Detroit Lions News Podcast. We will see you in the next video.